ICI Next here in Las Vegas and as one of the major exhibitors here at this show, Franklin Fueling Systems have launched a bunch of new products actually and we're going to talk to the product managers now and let them explain how the products work and what the benefit is for the customers. What we're talking about today is the Defender Overfill Prevention Valve. The whole idea behind this product is to have one valve for all fuels in all locations around the world. So the first thing you'll notice are the materials. Obviously they're all compatible with gasoline, biodiesel, E85, test fuel A, all the fuels from stainless steel, e-coating, etc. The second thing is we have a completely leak-proof valve. There are no leak points on there. And how, that, how we do that is use a magnetic coupling that actuates through the body or through the wall of the valve to have it operate. The mechanism works this way. As the fluid level in the tank rises, the float comes up. What it does is as it comes up, right now it's locked, but it releases a pin that allows the flow rate to catch the flapper and roll down. That's for a high flow event. If it's a lower flow event, it continues to raise up and it'll push it out into the flow path, which allows the lower flow rate to catch and put it down. In either case, there's the secondary drain off, which allows the driver to drain the hose after he gets the initial line shock. And you'll see as he goes up higher and higher, it shuts it off right there. Now the most ingenious part about this is there's no penetration between this mechanism on the outside and on the inside. And that's done through the use of four of those neodymium boron iron magnets that is mirror imaged with a sister right on the inside. So it's magnetically coupled. It means there's no physical connection between the inside and the outside, which means there's no leak paths whatsoever. Additionally, we want to make it easier to install. So what we've done, we have the standard threaded base that we normally use, the crushed seal gasket. But for the top drop tube, which has always been a difficult, there's no drilling, there's no epoxy, there's no measuring. We have just a flared tube. We have an insert. You just mark it, stick it in, you use a pipe cutter with a roll bit to roll groove it on there. And you get a perfectly parallel product that you thread on. And you can put the thing down into the hole. The other good part about it is to test it, say you're on a troubleshooting or you're doing annual testing, you have a remote testing kit. Several sections of rod that you put together, you put it down, it only goes in one way, it locks into the mechanism, and you just pull it up about an inch or two and a half to three centimeters, and it actuates the whole mechanism from the float to the, through the body and into the flapper. You just pull it out and you're done on your way. It's simple, it's easy, you can use it anywhere. Uh, all the global approvals that it requires, basically we think it's the best valve that's out there. At the moment, the industry uses various solutions for AdBlue because it's newer to the world. So they use products such as a heat trace product which wraps around pipe to keep the pipe temperature warm because AdBlue freezes at negative 11 degrees Celsius. And so what we looked at is how could you use a Franklin solution and the customer not have to use this heat trace. And what we've de developed is a great solution for our customers. Here you see the under dispenser containment sump, temperature sensor housing, and also the stainless steel shear valve. The temperature sensor housing is located on the discharge line, or the line that's coming from the submersible. The product will pass, go past this temperature sensor and cross over to the shear valve where it will go up into the dispenser. This temperature sensor here is interfacing then with our tank gauge that when the temperature reaches a certain point, it will turn on the submersible inside the tank chamber which then will recirculate the AdBlue product. Because the AdBlue product is warmer underground, the underground warmer AdBlue, as it's recirculating, will ensure that AdBlue is not going to freeze up or crystallize, which is a concern of the customer. Another nice part about this system is that if down the road AdBlue goes away and some other solution is used, this tank can also be converted over to a standard petrol or diesel tank and that whenever the temperature sensor reaches the threshold the customer specified where they don't want the AdBlue product to drop any lower in temperature, this temperature sensor will send a signal to the tank gauge, which will then send a signal to the submersible pump to turn on and push product through this system and return it back to the tank. There's stainless steel check valves on the discharge and the return line to maintain the product in this pipe system. So as a submersible turns on, the product will just recirculate from the dispenser side. So at this year's PEI, what we're showing for the pipe and containment product line is a new rigid entry boot. The rigid entry boot can be used with XP pipe, um, inch and a half, 
inch and three quarter and two inch size. What's different about it, it only requires one hole to be drilled to be installed. So it's a huge reduction in labor savings. Also, you can use the same boot for all three sizes, which is huge for installers. Very easy to install. The body is made out of a glass filled nylon, which is resistant to hydrocarbons. Um, we offer it for XP pipe, and we also offer it for conduit. So in conduit, this is, this is available in three quarter inch and one inch as well. Same one hole installation. The body is made from glass filled nylon, just as the one for XP pipe is. But as you can see the difference, we are clamping down on the pipe on both the inside and the outside because of the amount of torque that can be put on the conduit inside of the turbine sump. On the sump that we have here, we're displaying the new entry boot installed. Uh, Franklin Fueling Systems is coming out with a new product at the PEI NAX show. It's what we're calling our advanced protection pump. It's an option to our standard pumps and it's, it's trying to combat the microbial activity that we're seeing in tank and in sump. And really the changes from our standard product are stainless steel pipes in the tank, uh, stainless steel hardware in the tank and on the manifold, and E-coated and epoxy powder coated castings to protect the castings from the microbial activity that creates this accelerated corrosion. Um, the other new thing that we're launching at the show is a new mechanical leak detector that is also uh, focused on the biofuels to give us better compatibility uh, with those fuels that have the ethanols that are somewhat related to the acetic acid that's creating this accelerated corrosion. So now we have UL listed uh, leak detectors to the level of E85 uh, to biodiesel 20% and biodiesel 100%. So the pump and the leak detectors can handle those biofuels um, inherently UL listed by a third party. So this year at PEI we have the TS550 EVO, uh, the Franklin Fueling, it's our top of the line tank gauge. Um, we have some new features that we've added to it. Uh, we actually, with the customer in mind, we actually took some steps to actually improve the setup process associated with it. Uh, we went through and we actually uh, eliminated the requirement for tank length. Um, we actually added up to 500 correction points with that. Um, we actually also took, uh, for the, the settings, uh, high, 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 low, low, low um, percentage base uh, input rather than having to calculate everything out manually. Um, and also the import and export uh, capability for just the, the tank um, in a CSV file format so that you can get that in and out and be able to take that from site to site. We also um, expanded the capabilities. We added a depth recirculation capability within EVO itself, um, working off a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. Um, it can interpret the, the temperature in the system and know when to uh, basically be able to, to activate and deactivate and run the pump to do to uh, regulate that and recirculate that product. Um, it also has the ability to um, be scheduled based on timers and so on. And we added a bunch of logic functions that cross over to the, both those DEF applications and recirculation and also um, control features for generator applications and simplification for those controls. Very excited to announce the launch of our Omni nozzle. Uh, it's a vapor recovery nozzle. Um, we're bringing to the industry a nozzle that has some familiarity with uh, the form and the feel, the look of the nozzle. However, inside the nozzle is radically different. Uh, we're bringing some safety features to it. Uh, this nozzle has a no pressure, no flow feature. Uh, it has an over horizontal shutoff feature and a full tank shutoff, so it's a very safe nozzle. Again, on the outside, it looks very familiar to what the customer's been used to, uh, but on the inside, there's a radical change. Uh, this uh, is a modular design, so if there's any type of uh, maintenance or repair that has to be done with one simple tool, a turn, twist, pull that modular design out, and you can either do repairs or replacement of that part and put another one back in. That allows this nozzle to go back into service very quickly, saving that station owner uh, a lot of time in the down uh, fueling point and, and letting the cars go through rapidly and, and, and being profitable. Um, this, this nozzle is marketed for 
the, the, really the global market. Um, we're going after uh, certainly the China, Asia market, which is expanding in vapor recovery, but also the very mature market of uh, EMEA market.